Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Khmer's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, in this Strixhaven spoiler season, we've seen some pretty strange but pretty awesome things. For example, Hoffrey Ghostforge might just be the most powerful Boros commander ever. And typically, you don't hear the words powerful and Boros in the same sentence. You also don't typically hear the words Elephant Graveyard Commander in Boros either. But out of all the exciting and strange things that we've seen so far, the weirdest has got to be Cody. First off, if you haven't seen the Strixhaven trailer, you're in for a treat. Go watch that after this. But as always, with these quick takes, my apologies if I make any mistakes. I'm trying to make them quickly and efficiently, and this one especially I'm making pretty early in the morning, so I just woke up and I very well might make plenty of mistakes. But with all that said, let's jump into it. So this quick take is on Cody Vociferous Codex. Cody is a 1-4 construct that costs 3. It says you can't cast permanent spells, so there's that. But moving on, pay for, tap it, add Wooberg. When you cast your next spell this turn, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile an instant or sorcery card with lesser mana value. Until end of turn, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost, but each other card exiled this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. Now there's a lot going on here, so let's break it down. You can't cast permanent spells is a big disadvantage that you're giving yourself when you put this in play. Now, yes, you can get around this if you build an entire deck around non-permanent spells or mostly non-permanent spells, but still it's a big restriction. The next part is kind of like a very specific cascade. You activate it, you get some mana, you cast a spell, and then you get an instant or sorcery off the top of your library that has less converted mana cost. Again, with Cody in play, that's gotta be a non-permanent spell that you're casting to actually even get this effect. Now, of course, this seems to be very intentional restrictions because obviously casting something off the top of your library can be very abusable. For example, let's say that you didn't have that you can't cast permanent spells restriction. You could literally just have one instant or sorcery in your deck and then basically guarantee that you're always going to hit that. Kind of like how my Plarg episode had a certain restriction, but you could build it so you could cast the exact same spell every time. Cody seemingly really wants to get around you doing that. Of course, there are still some things that you can do to abuse this, though. Again, say that you've got an instant or sorcery with a zero mana cost, you could cast something that costs one and always hit it. Again, that's a very specific build, though, and actually, I think a more fun way to build this commander is to make that downside into a big upside. So let's move on to another card so I can show you what exactly I mean by that. The deck that I would want to build around Cody is a secret commander deck actually built around Zedru the Great Hearted. Let's read Zedru and then I'll explain. Zedru is a 2-4 Minotaur monk that costs 1 red, white, blue. She has at the beginning of your upkeep you gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of permanents you own that your opponents control. And by paying red, white, blue, target opponent gains control of target permanent you control. So Zedru is a very friendly commander wanting to simply donate things to your opponents. And in this case, you're gonna donate Cody. You see that player over there that's playing an Enchantress deck? You know what they really need? Cody. Or that player over there who's playing a creature heavy deck? They could also use Cody. Or maybe that player who's playing an Artifact Storm deck? I'm sure they could really use Cody. And for all those Meldrotha players out there, I'm sure you could really use Cody on your side. In all seriousness though, when you give them Cody, you essentially shut them down. Again, there are a ton of decks out there that revolve heavily around permanence. And not letting them cast things, well, gets rid of them doing anything. Isn't Zedru nice? And again, the best part about Zedru being actually a secret commander is that you're getting access to all five colors thanks to Cody. And there are plenty of cards out there that Zedru decks wish they could have if they only had access to green and black. Now, of course, with a secret commander type deck, you definitely need some ways to tutor for Zedru. So cards like Bring to Light, Shared Summons, and Mythos of Brokos could come in really handy. 
Bring to light says, search for library for a creature, instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of colors of mana spent to cast Bring to Light. Exile that card, then shelf your library. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. So with this, we can tutor a lot of things out, including Zedru. And then Shared Summons is an instant that lets you tutor for two creatures. And there are plenty of other creatures in this deck that can be incredibly brutal as well to donate. And then Mythos of Brokos essentially lets you tutor for a card, get it into your graveyard, and then get two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So this can either tutor for Zedru or get Zedru back if it's dealt with. And of course, since you're in black, there are plenty of other tutors that you have access to as well. And of course, outside of Zedru, there are plenty of other ways to be an incredibly kind player and donate your things to your friends. So since this deck is all about giving away our things, we're going to be running things like Harmless Offering, Bizarre Trader, and Blim Comedic Genius. Harmless Offering says target opponent gains control of target permanent you control. So you can give an opponent Cody or one of your other things that has massive downside. Now I probably should have known this earlier, but you've got to be really careful when you cast Cody. Again, while it's on your side, you're shut off from casting permanents. So if you're planning to donate with something like Zedru or Bizarre Trader, make sure you play that first. Bizarre Trader has tap target player gains control of target artifact, creature, or land you control. And then Blim Comedic Genius has whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player gains control of target permanent you control, then each player loses life and discards cards equal to the number of permanents they control but don't own. So Blim is somewhat like Zedru in that it can donate things, but it punishes players rather than rewarding you. Regardless, it's incredibly effective in this kind of a deck. And speaking of effective, there's Puka's Mischief. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exchange control of target non-land permanent you control and target non-land permanent in opponent controls with an equal or lesser converted mana cost. So here, why don't you take Cody and I'll take uh, Soul Ring. That seems like an even trade, right? And then there's Roll Reversal, which says exchange control of two target permanents that share a permanent type. But the best way to use Cody has got to be Fractured Identity. It says, exile target non-land permanent, each player other than its controller creates a token that's a copy of it. Now all your friends can get a Cody, isn't that wonderful? And obviously this card works with a lot of other things in this deck as well. But now let's move on to some of the cards that we want to donate. Now typical Zedru decks have access to red, white, and blue. So a card like 9 lives is a fantastic card for that deck to donate. It has Hexproof and it says if a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an Incarnation counter on 9 lives. When it's got 9 or more Incarnation counters on it, you exile it. And when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. So while it's on your side, it has major upside, and then when you give it away to someone else, well, they're gonna lose. Again, there are plenty of fantastic cards to donate that normal Zedru decks can that are in red, white, and blue. But since this is a 5-color deck with Zedru as a secret commander, I want to highlight cards from the other two colors. And there are some fantastic ones, so let's start off with Demonic Pact, Nefarious Lich, and Lich's Mastery. Demonic Pact has at the beginning of your upkeep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. Demonic Pact deals 4 damage to target creature or player and you gain 4 life. Target opponent discards 2 cards, draw 2 cards, or you lose the game. So you utilize the first 3 choices for yourself, and then you give it to an opponent, and then they lose on their upkeep. And then there's Nefarious Lich, which says if damage would be dealt to you, exile that many cards from your graveyard instead. If you can't, you lose the game. If you would gain life, draw that many cards instead, and when Nefarious Lich leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. So by giving this to an opponent and getting rid of it, they lose. And then Lich's Mastery is somewhat similar. It has Hexproof and it says you can't lose the game whenever you gain life draw that many cards. Whenever you lose life for each one life you lost, exile a permanent you control or a card from your hand or graveyard. And when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Now like 9 lives, having Hexproof makes this enchantment a little more palatable for our opponents. We can't just target it and get rid of it, but we can cast something like Calming Verse. Basically, when we cast it, we can destroy all enchantments we don't control. And if we want to save any of our own enchantments, we just hit the tap all of our lands when we do so. But for ones like Nefarious Lich that don't have Hexproof, a card like Aura of Silence can come in huge. It says Artifact and Enchantment spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast and sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. So this can tax our opponents, but more importantly, we have flexibility with when we can sacrifice this to destroy something. So again, if we donate something like Nefarious Lich, we can hold that player hostage. Hey, if you don't do what I tell you, I'm going to destroy your enchantment and you're going to lose. Also, cards like this have a lot of flexibility in protecting ourselves. For example, if Cody's on our side of the field and we need to get rid of it, we can. But now let's move on to some other cards to donate, like Immortal Coil and Forbidden Crypt. Immortal Coil has tap, exile two cards in your graveyard, draw a card. If damage would be dealt to you, prevent that damage, remove a card in your graveyard from the game for each one damage prevented this way. When there are no cards in your graveyard, you lose the game. And then Forbidden Crypt says if you would draw a card, return a card from your graveyard to your hand. Instead, if you can't, you lose the game. If a card would be put in your graveyard from anywhere, exile the card instead. So basically these are get rid of graveyard, player loses. If you get something like Leyline of the Void down early, or if you've got something like Relic of Progenitus, you can get rid of graveyards and they're going to be gone. 
And you can also utilize some enchantments that don't make the player lose the game, but can really hamper them, like Midnight Oil and Colfiner's Plants. Midnight Oil enters the battlefield with 7 hour counters on it. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card and remove 2 hour counters from Midnight Oil. Your maximum hand size is equal to the number of hour counters on Midnight Oil, and whenever you discard a card, you lose one life. Basically, you can draw extra cards with this to start, and then you donate to someone else, and then they've got no hand size. And then when Culpiner's Plans comes into play, remove the top 7 cards of your library from the game face down. You may look at and play cards removed from the game with Culpiner's Plans, skip your draw step, you can't play more than one spell each turn. So you give this to an opponent, they skip their draw step, and they can't cast more than one spell each turn. Yeah, that player is not going to last very long. Green also has some things that you can donate, though you gotta be careful when you choose to do so. Munga Worm has you can't untap more than one land during your untapped step. So this is a 6-5, but it can slow an opponent down to a crawl if they already tapped out. And then Nikia of the Old Ways says you can't cast non-creature spells whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana of any type that land produced. So this will give an opponent a lot of extra mana, but it shuts them out from casting non-creature spells. So again, if you give them this and Cody, they can't cast any spells. Now, if you're giving decent-sized creatures to an opponent, or just creatures in general, it's also a good idea to give them something like Statecraft. It says prevent all combat damage to be dealt to and dealt by creatures you control. Essentially, you don't want those creatures attacking you or dying in combat. So you're going to want to use this and other ways to protect Cody and your other things that you donate. And of course, you're also going to want to use politics as well to make sure those things survive. When it comes to commanders that might want Cody, the list is probably really small. In fact, it might even be a stretch to say that Joda wants Cody. Cody shuts you off from all permanent spells. But if you've got a big spells spell slinger deck built around Joda, then you might be okay. You activate Cody, you cast something huge from your hand, and then you get something else huge from your library. Only problem is, if someone deals with Joda, you need to deal with Cody in order to get Joda back out. And again, that's got to be a non-permanent solution. So again, with a deck like this, Cody can be a very high risk, very high reward play. But now let's move on to some pricey considerations for Cody, and the first one that comes to mind is Donate. Donate is the original Donate card. It's also on the reserve list, and it's around a $20 card. And speaking of the reserve list, there's also the incredibly expensive Lich, which is the original Lich card. And another fantastic but expensive donate target is Illusions of Grandeur. Basically, it comes into play, you gain 20 life, you give it to an opponent, they're going to lose 20 life. But now it's time for me to wrap things up and give you my final thoughts on this commander. Again, in my opinion, Cody is the weirdest five-color commander that we have ever seen. It has a lot of very intentional restrictions to make sure that it's not very easily abusable. But again, with a deck that's built around giving it to someone else and restricting them, it can be pretty powerful. Now, will this commander be popular? I'm not sure. I mean, there are some cool things that you can do with it, but I'm not sure if Zedger players are actually going to turn their Zedger deck into a secret commander Zedger deck, but again, only time will tell. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.